Uh, we're going to do a Q&A for about uh, 20 minutes. If you want to ask any questions, feel free. And then after that, there will be I Am Weekender, which is a documentary about Weekender. It lasts about an hour. And then Weekender itself. Wiz, I will start with you. Um, this is a film that we, you made in 1992. And it is... Although it's a music video, ostensibly, to me it's a film. And it has a very particular narrative. Um, it's long, obviously, to suit the music. Um, and it's a film that came out of you hearing the track. Jeff from Heavenly uh, had the track and he played it to you in a particular environment. You drove him home, he put you in a room and you listened to it. Is it right that the whole of the film just appeared to you while you listened to that track? By and large, yes. So uh, it's like a vision. I wouldn't describe it in such grandiose terms, but I felt a huge inspiration and conviction uh, on hearing the, the, the song, which was as... as perhaps we all know is is an extraordinary piece of you know of music which you know has symphonic um uh, pretensions to it you know it, it's, it has many tempo changes and uh, uh you know emotional changes uh along with tempo and um, etc et but the reason i think i felt so um uh, uh, visionary after he hearing the song is th is that for Two or three years, I'd been going out to um, acid house clubs and, 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 and raves and had been consciously and unconsciously collecting my, my reactions, my feelings, things that I saw, people that I met, things that I heard, the way people danced, the way people would start the evening dancing in one way, and by the end of the evening, they'd invented a whole new vocabulary of dances um, because it was such a extraordinary, creative, and autonomous time when, and this, I think one of, the, one of the aspects that was so special about the revolution that was acid house culture is that it was coming from within the culture. It wasn't people like reading about it in magazines or, 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 or kind of copying. It, it, was, it, was, being in, it was being made up. It, it was, it was, it was a, a pioneering time. That's quite unusual. It's quite unusual to make a film like that. And at the time, often these, uh, those kind of films are made a little bit later when people have thought about it. And so to make a film like Weekender, kind of while it was still going on, it's quite unusual you know I mean if you think about something like say Quadrophenia that film was made about the mod culture years afterwards years and years afterwards and you, but this came out at the time and that particularly is to do with it being a music video isn't it because it has to be rooted in that time yeah I mean it was I mean it, it was the soundtrack was for a contemporary band for yeah. the, a band that for sure um, but I think it's you know it's fair to say that that uh, you know it, it, it has transcended its 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 original intention to promote a song. Um, I mean it, it transcended that before it was made. The band aren't playing their guitars and singing the lyrics. It's never been a music video to to, to my mind. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, Chloe, I want to ask you about, because you've made a documentary called I Am Weekender, about Weekender. And um, we're going to see it before we see uh, Weekender. So the documentary was started during lockdown. It's got a kind of lockdown, grainy feel. But it's also um, got a kind of interesting textures throughout the film. It's not just there are talking heads, in inverted commas. People talk about the film, what it meant to them people like Irving Welsh, people like Jeremy Deller, lots of very interesting people. But the, f the feel of the film is something different. What were you aiming to do with it? Well, I think um, because I set out at the beginning just having these like Zoom interviews that I'd pieced together and then we decided to bring in this archive material and I also had the rushes right from the start. It was this 
real mix of palette, visual palette that I had to work with. So I was just like, I'm going to roll with this and just make it completely cut and paste. When we got to post-production, the Zoom interviews, there was sort of the, the bone of contention because they were the things and we, we ended up degrading them to the point where, you know, it made something shit look even shitter. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I think it was just sort of the spirit of it that I wanted it to be really kind of like DIY and I guess my interpretation also of, you know, what was going on back then. Um, you obviously, you come from a music background, you make music yourself, you're interested in music. You weren't in the rave scene in 1992, but what did, um, when you saw Weekender for the first time, what resonance did it have it for you? Well, I could definitely relate to it. I was, I was only 10 when Weekender came out, but I did start going to raves not very long afterwards. So it was a culture that I was familiar with. I think the same thing that everybody loves about Weekender, you know, you see this, this the, I guess, you know, the, the, the club scenes, the drug scenes, the, um, you know, what, it, what it's like when you, when you take a bit too much, like, we're just having fun, you know. I think all of that, it was kind of like, I, I could relate to it. There's a choice as well that you made in the, in the documentary, in that Wiz is in it, but you don't talk to him. You know, we see you, but you're not interviewed for it. Well, that was Wiz. He really didn't want to be interviewed as well. But actually, I think, it, I think it's good because um, <laughs> it's his film, too. So the film speaks for itself in a way. And um, that, that footage that we see of Wiz was something that... Because I, I, I limited myself to what I could use. If not, it would have been a Pandora's box and I'd probably still be cutting now but I wanted to only use stuff that came from Wiz's archive. And that little bit of footage was something that materialized quite late in the process. I was on your case about like, you must have something with you in it. And then it was this um, from an MTV interview that you did. And it worked really well. Yeah, but, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> um, when you think about um, Weekend, when you first finished it, Wiz, uh, did you, did you, have a sense that it was something really special or did you just think oh like, you know sometimes with films you can think oh thank god it's over I've just got to get it out I mean how did you feel about it when you'd finished it I absolutely felt that this was something really necessary uh, and it, it, it was illustrating portraying showing, not telling, showing things that were going on which weren't being faithfully, faithfully reported, things that were being um, vilified, things that were being censored. And it was, it was, you know, what we would call, you know, false, false news now. Uh, and it was something that was so important, so important to so many people. Uh, and you know, albeit self-appointed, I, 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 you know, I really felt on a mission to convey this, 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 this experience with, you know, with conviction, with authenticity, with the, the wonderful crew that, and cast that I had. Um, I think that, that, that we did. You know, yeah. we, we did do that. And as is often the case, you know, in, in, Things that do convey kind of inconvenient truths that don't fit in with the, 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 the you know the, the prevailing narrative, they are suppressed. And Weekender, I mean, it's hard to believe that Weekender was banned by the BBC, it was banned by ITV, and it was given an 18 certificate. I mean, it's almost absurd when you think about it now, but that was what happened. So that, you know, it was it was um, you know a kind of a, a pyrrhic truth, but the fact that that's what happened proved that what we were trying to say needed to be said. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, uh, it, it's not... Uh, I'd much rather it had been a huge success, um, you know, when it, was, when it was first released, of course. However, it is wonderful, you know, 30 years later that um, we're sitting here now and it is... It is and Chloe's made this, you know, documentary. Um, so it is, it, it is now reaching a... A far wider audience, and, and you know, the BFI restoring it and, and re-releasing it. Yeah, exactly. The BFI, just in case you need to buy Weekender, you can. The BFI have re-released it, and uh, it's a really beautiful 
uh, edition of it. We've got but I Am Weekender and Weekender on it and uh, essays and extras. It's really good, so I recommend. I recommend. Um, Including one, uh, an essay written by yourself. Maybe. Yeah, one written by me as well. <laughs> um, but when, I mean, it's interesting because it, obviously, I think for many people, when they saw Weekender, it really kind of sang to them. It told them something that they knew already that was expressed in a very beautiful way. And as you said, it's kind of lasted over 30 years. Do you feel, did your feelings around Weekender change over that time? I mean, did you, did you come to think of it in any, any different way? Or did you keep the same feeling that you had at the beginning? Because of people's reactions, I think, is what I mean. You know, people must have come up to you and, and talked to you about it. Well, you know, it, it, it's, <laughs> the, my relationship with the weekend, uh, you know, it, 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 it is, it, you know, it's, 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 it's a relationship. And <laughs> over the years, um, you know, the, 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 the level of, 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 of um, intimacy has, has fluctuates, you know. Um, there's been times when I have, you know, it's been an albatross around my neck a little bit. Um, uh, I mean, this is, this is uh, not, not very well known, but The, the Who, um, they, they approached me with Quadrophenia 2. Would, would I like to, to direct Quadrophenia 2? Um, there is a script. I can, I can, I can tell you what happens. Um, but um, I, I was in, you know, that's the. Uh, I mean, perhaps, the, perhaps, perhaps now I might consider it. But 15 years ago, it was just like that's the last thing that I want to kind of be associated with. I'm, you know, I'm interested in other things other than young, young, young males struggling with, 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 you know, with their identity. <laughs> you know. Um, all the time, it's, there's beautiful things. I get written. People write to me. I meet people, you know, in the street and in, in, in the pub, and and they, you know, say these extraordinary things. Someone said to me the other day, they said that it's the only film that was made at the time about how we lived, which you know, it's quite simple. But this person was felt that they, that what they were saying, I think, is that they felt that what they did. Was, was was validated and you yeah. know and and, and that, that that's that's a wonderful thing. I mean, on the the other the other hand, someone came up to me recently and said, "Yeah, I watched Weekender and and um, uh, the toilet scene, and uh, I had, it made me have this flashback, and I felt really sick." <laughs> that's the bit I feel like that when I see it. <laughs> it makes me go like, oh. um, if you had, to, um, I'm gonna just in case any of you want to ask questions, I'm going to throw it open to you in uh, now, pretty much. I'm going to ask one more question before we do that. If you had to pick a, a little moment in Weekender that you love, Chloe, what would you pick? I think it might actually be the toilet scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just because it's not something that you see and I don't know, and it is so real, you know. I think that's the one, it reminds me of toilets at the fortress or um, yeah. Yeah. Is that yeah. gross? I'm sure there'll be moments like this for many people <laughs> this weekend. What about you, Wiz? Um, I love the moment when, um, <laughs> when the Weatherall remix kicks in during the end credits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, along with the... I'm not, I'm not trying to be facetious. Um, I mean, because there are moments which, which I, I, I feel you know, pleased about. But the reason I mention that now is when we were, when we were editing Weekender, even though it was really strictly storyboarded and, 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 and uh, um, you know, almost to the frame, one thing I didn't realize until we started editing was, was, was how how much of a, of a knife edge the, the, the ending is. Yeah. And I hadn't um, factored that in. You, you can't leave an audience just like hanging like that. Yeah. You, you know, there has to be some come Fade down. Fade out kind of yeah, thing, yeah. Some kind of, some kind of uh, release. So for a long time in the editing, we were using this, this, this house song. Um, uh, but it, it, you know, we didn't have the money to license it. 
And then suddenly this, the, this Andrew Weverall remix uh, uh, um, uh, was given to me and it hadn't been recorded before before the shooting, so you know, I haven't, I haven't even heard it. And it was just like the perfect, I mean, what could be better? A remix of the song. And the reason that it's so great is that it, it does allow a release for the audience, but what it also does is that it, it takes you back to the beginning of the film and that impetus to, to, to go out dan to dance in the first place. So it's a fantastic return and, be and be uh, a beginning. Yeah, I love it. Great. Okay, um, can we ha have the lights up just in case anybody out there wants to ask a question? If you don't, it's fine. But there you are. You're so good looking. Hello. We've got two questions. We've got one here and one over there. Let's have them. How do you feel this film will reflect the rave generation in sort of 30 years' time? People still hang on to Quadrophenia, which it never had an end. And so, how does Weekender sort of fit into that? Quadrophenia had a, a, a punishingly profound effect on me when I was when I was young, and um, uh, you know, it's permanently tattooed in 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 my mind and on my heart. And so, I'm you know very flattered for you to. You know, to, to to make a comparison. I mean, you know, that's in in its you know modest way. I think Weekend uh, does you know does do that, and uh, perhaps it will continue to do so um, because, as as you know, Miranda and Chloe have have, have pointed out that that there is a kind of a, an authenticity to it. And it, it's not exploitative, you know. It, um, and also, it's you know, it, it's very much about dance culture, obviously, but it doesn't fetishize it. No, know. it doesn't make it flares and smiley faces. Um, who, you've got a question in the middle. It's just a question for Wiz. Um, you were obviously commissioned by Heavenly. Were you aware of the band's reaction? Did you ever speak to them once they saw the final product and? What was that? I know that might be personal, but surely they were pleased. <laughs> yeah, I've, ab absolutely. Um, on the you know, on the whole, they were absolutely blown away by it. Um, as as were all the people that were involved. The, you know, the, the heavenly heavenly music and, and 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 Sony and there was a lot of preparation done. In, 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 in pre-production and Liam the singer of Flowered Up originally he was cast to play the, the lead character and as, as perhaps you know the, all the band members are cast in the film in, in minor, minor, minor roles so you know it was no secret um, to, to what we were making you know they were very much hands-on involved um, and you know and that's because we you know, we had this 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 conviction that what we were doing was was um, was was necessary and could be potent. You know, and important. Um, okay, so l you're all sitting there. I think we've done enough talking about it, really. Um, I think you should see the wonderful documentary made by Chloe, which is I Am Weekender, and then you'll see the fantastic film Weekender, which is directed by Wiz. Thank you very much. Thanks to Wiz. Thanks to Chloe. Thank you, lovely audience. And thank you to the Pilton Palais. Thank you very much. Yes, thank, thank you. you.